Okay, so here is your standard RX-8. Um, I don't want, we don't know what you want to call it. The piece between the two passenger seats. Completely standard. See, I bought a second one just in case if I ever sold the car and wanted to keep the subwoofer out. So, for those who have RX-8s who know, easy to handle, and there's your frame. Not that we're going to use this part. Um, when I bought it, it just came together like this from the seller, which is fine. But uh, we will sort of look at this towards the end of it. I don't know what you want to call it, parcel tray, parcel holder. I'm doing this backwards for some reason that the, uh, the viewfinder is back to front, okay? So bear with me. And that is the wheel we're going to put the subwoofer into. So as you can see in the pocket, can we get some light in there? Yes we can. And a lock I assume. Not that I've really ever used it. Alright. Scooby Doo fade. Okay, and here is the skin taken off. So this is the inside. And it's obviously dusty as fuck. Okay, and here is the other inside piece. Let's get some light going over here. Now, I think I've mentioned in my part one video, I'm going to call it part one video, or I've mentioned on a forum, that if you do this, this piece rattles. So, I honestly, like, if the one thing, if I could go back and do it again, I would probably put some foam or something under there to try and stop it rattling. I just have like an old piece of earmuff foam, I don't know, I honestly don't know, I haven't tried, but there is some kind of rattle, and I'm guessing it's this, even with the two screws holding it in at each end. There's the back. Can we get this out? I don't know. Okay. Now the other step I did was, I made a mould off the back half here and then I attached it to the front half so then it looked like that just without a gap. And then what I also did was I scuffed all the plastic on both sides and I did a layer using epoxy resin. Uh, and put a lining of fiberglass matting um, just because I've read it's a sound can be used as sound deadening so we're trying to get as much oomph and decent sound as we can out of it uh, again it's really hard to show because I never took too many photos or a video of actually doing it okay we've moved again to try and get some better lighting also so after creating a, a box I also lined so I lined all along here where the screw holes were and I filled all the edges up with some kind of RTV that I had on hand. Do I recommend anything in particular? No. I guess liquid nails would probably work but I just used, I RTV'd it and this is, this is the result here. So I can't separate, this is a little bit loose, I didn't quite get down there but I still put the screws in just for adhesion. Which is all fine. So I went over with um, just some leftover carbon fiber just to try and make it look pretty if anyone looked in there. Obviously the edges are not the tidiest. I poured leftover resin there just to try, not so much for strength, just to try and make sure all the holes were plugged and we're going to get as much oomph and doof as we could out of subwoofer I guess. And here is the front half. So we're going to have to quickly do some scooby doo magic and um, wave 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 out of here doodle doodle, doodle 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 okay so i've just taken the um clips would you call them the holders just to hold off the grill so i'd resprayed the grill black i probably should have actually scuffed it down because it was a bit of rust but nothing's coming through it's a little bit dirty but what can you do at the moment now oh, this is a bit of shit that i had in my car that got through there so the mtx terminator series eight 8 inch woofers 
Now, the only reason why I'm using these, the only reason I'm using these again, is because I got them cheap at a swap meet. Um, I was looking for eight inch woofers, and I was worried about the depth, which, like, okay, I could have um, adjusted the box at the back, but I also have one of those um, Auto EXE K strut braces through the back there, so I didn't want to put on an actual like wooden box like I've seen some people do. Didn't quite have the room, but um, in all honesty, I've had this disconnected for probably six months, and with the head unit I'm running, um, I can't really tell the difference. It all depends on the music and the levels and everything. So what we're doing today is we're going to port it as I can't find any definitive answers on any benefits to porting. This is unported, so um, we're gonna port it and see if we can actually get some boom come out of it. Okay, so this is not a sponsored video, but Makita, if you ever wanna send me some free shit, I use a lot of your products. Actually, I'm looking for the battery powered chainsaw and edge trimmer, cheers. <laughs> Anyway, back to the sub box at hand, here we go. So, you can sort of see a bit of a lip here. So underneath that skin, I'd run fiberglass, and then, obviously I painted it black after I finished it. But, if I try and do this, with the magic of some editing. So you can see a slight smear of the black RTV I used. I did try and fiberglass it, but I also just ran finger smear all the way around underneath underneath the join on the inside with some more RTV. Okay, bear with me here, I'm using one hand to hold the camera. So all this crap here is just some sort of leftover resin and bits and pieces that have come through. And here is the back of the wiring. So nothing too flash there. Taped it up just so it wouldn't vibrate. So inside and outside of the plastic is wrapped in fiberglass. I had some of these holes cut out, which should, by rights, go around there. Now the reason why I'm doing this, well I'm going to paint it black and glue it to the sub box, as well as just leave the natural screws in there to pin it down. But the reason why I'm doing this is to try and make sure there's no air escaping if we're going to port it, because you can see, you can see here, there's a slight gap. So if we're going to port it, we're trying to seal it as much as possible. So I'm not going to go out and paint this black, but I guess we'll run with this today and um, I'll paint it black at another time and see how it all works out, I guess. Okay, I've spun it upside down. Next, this here is the top of the sub box. Sub box, the sub box from the subwoofer that I pulled apart. It had some of those, um, what are they called, horns, tweeters, but I kept it for the hole just in case. Now, again, this is upside down, and I've placed the ring over the screw holes and the hole for the subwoofer. Now, down the bottom, we've probably got tip of my finger, we've probably got that much room, so I'm not sure if I want to put it on the front or put it behind, but again, I don't want to have to redo it if it sounds good one way, not the other. And we've probably got, probably got the same amount of room at the top, I kind of want it up here. So, next is, let's find a hole saw. So we've got it just sitting in there. So here is the original tube from the original box. Now obviously if we go through here, we stand it side on, it's not going to be right. Oh damn, we can't go through the top because there's all that box missing. So I reckon we have to do it down the bottom. And again, the depth is going to be an issue. It's going to be a real tight fit actually. So. I'm having a play before, you turn it off for a second and it works. Boom, we'll do that. And we'll put it in there. We probably should really center it up, I think. I know it's on this on the side, but 
Yeah, we should get that, I think. I wish there was like some kind of mesh cover we could put in there. I could put some mesh behind it, but I wouldn't mind mesh up close. Hang on. Right. No, nah, not big enough. I do have some mesh floating around somewhere, but I haven't quite moved in properly. So I haven't found all my toys and bits and pieces lying around. But um, let's do some measuring and try and center this bad boy and see how we go. Okay, so I've measured it up. I've used the eyechrometer. What's an eyechrometer? We all have two in our head. Sometimes one works, sometimes both don't work. That's why we need glasses. Okay, so I can see that my center point is not 100%. And it was a very rough estimate with the um, tape measure. I mean, honestly, the hole I cut out for this is not 100%, it's slightly over to one side. I think like even just from this angle you can see. I really should have screwed this down for a better, um, better fitment and better measurement. But uh, we're going to chuck this bad boy in and see how it goes. become what not to do when installing the RXX sub as as you can see didn't take into account for that part of the box so instead of fucking the box it would have been wiser to go through the back so what are we gonna do here not really sure right now but um, if we can get this bad boy out of the fucking drill So again, like I said about the RTV, and you can see the fiberglass layer. I don't think all of it got impregnated. But what can you do? Well, it looks like we're cutting this short because I'm sure I grabbed the fucking black tube. So, um, but anyway, just real quick. Hold still, fucker. So I don't have all my tools here, but I have 90% of my tools. I just had a Dremel with the right tip and I carved out what I could on the inside of the box and I put some tape on the back of the port and what we'll do is we'll glue that down when I get the black Seeker Flex and we'll just fill that all in. So like most American... so. So like most American show cars, you won't see the sins unless you pop the bonnet. Okay, so I finally got around to pick up the correct spray paint and the correct coloured sealant as well. So here we go. Day three of what should have been probably a one afternoon job. Day one, it was fucking stinking hot. Yesterday, day two, humid as 
fuck. In fact, I didn't even get to bed till two in the morning watching Trailer Park Boys because it was so hot and humid. So today is day three. It's warm, very warm, and it's a good day. Not that anyone gives a shit about the weather, so let's get back to uh, pimping the sub box. So just really quickly, last night, um, late last night when the humidity was down a bit and the heat was down, I put some screw holes, some screw holes, I put some holes in the, the ring there. Now again, the ring is to try and keep this level as there's a slight curve and we're gonna fill the gaps up. That's what the ring's for. And also underneath here, I put some more sealant um, I might do a wee bit, oh it feels pretty good, I might do a wee bit more and as you remember down here is where I totally botched it, I was always taught not to talk shit about your work but um, didn't really think about this so uh, if you're ever going to make one of these subwoofers, depending if you want to put a port in there, really really think about where you want to place your hole. Okay so the wooden ring is on and as you can see there's a gap there and this is what I mean about the gap and you can see straight through so we're just going to put a wee bit of goo all around probably fill this edge in on the inside and not worry about this outside just yet I mean there's a small gap under here which I want to fill but we'll come to that later um, I'm not 100% sure if how I'm going to do it is going to work correctly so part of the reason why I also came in um, late last night and just did a few bits and pieces was because I was watching this guy on YouTube and he was making a Bazoku, I hope it's pronounced right, Toyota Cressida. And um, you may or may not know who I'm talking about, but I felt it was very cringe, cringe worthy, so I had to go do something to sort of, yeah, I haven't got around to doing any fiberglass around here because my gear's not here. But I don't want to completely say it's cringeworthy because I don't know where he's getting his advice from. I don't know who's teaching him or taught him. But there seems to be a lot of steps he's missing on um, how to fiberglass properly is basically all I'm going to say. Um, good luck to him. I hope he has been taught correctly. <laughs> Alright, so so far so good with this edging here, um, there's not a lot to go by because of the gap, so I used the icrometer, and so if you don't know what the icrometer is, you have two of those. So now the idea is to try and fill on the outside, even though I can see a few gaps like on the inside, but inside's easy enough, it's the outside we want to keep nice and tidy. So this side, where's some light? This side looks pretty mint. Oh, there's a few little sins. Where's my finger? There's a few little sins along here. And I didn't quite get the right angle to peel it off. So it's a little bit wet and a little bit ugly over here. Fingers crossed, not many people decide to take that much of a closer look. <laughs> yeah, but uh. Much like many show cars, you're going to see it from a distance, you're not going to go looking up close, are you? So far so good, I think. So it's day four, and the reason why it's taken so long is because uh, I'm letting things dry. I mean, it has been stifling hot, so I don't particularly want to be working out here. But mainly, mainly to let things dry, and so when we line everything up and put it back together, it's not going to fall or slip out or whatever else, with the uh, mainly with the silicon. And so as we look down here, did a touch up, so it looks a bit better. Um, that's as far as we got, so I think today we're going to be putting it all back together properly.
earth is really tight. And here is the finished result. So with the lighting for the camera you can't actually see in the port too badly, which fingers crossed and the car is going to be the same. Now there we go, we'll focus and see some light. Right, now let's put her in. <laughs> So I kept these connectors on the back of the box. Um, originally after watching a lot of YouTube channels, I saw that someone suggested using these types of pins that you drill through and screw on. Um, it was actually burning through the resin. So I thought better of it, just in case it's set up on fire. So I drilled a hole and put silicon in it and made sure that it wasn't going anywhere with this, with the original setup, out, um, the original attachments out of the box. Bad, is it? Um, I treated it like your mother. A few fingers deep, you can feel that it's definitely working, but it's not going hard out. See, one of the hardest things of finding on the internet is any information of do you actually port the box? Obviously, the box is not the factory size, so everything sort of said yes, maybe we should port it. I've done that, I've sealed as much as I can, um, so it's definitely going. So it's not, it's not a case of wiring. Um, but I mean, I'll go test it at a later date and uh, we'll see how Probably it goes. Probably a tad bit overkill, but I thought I might just seal the joins. So I've only left this little piece here for the, to get it on and off and in and out of the car. So I sealed up the whole unit. I'm pretty sure I took a photo or a video I've all taped up and even here and just a little across maybe a bit of overkill but that's oh shit but that's because we didn't get any um, quick results when we tested it in the car but we'll be testing that tonight i.e. Uh, when I'm alone and I can thrash the shit out of the stereo